Welcome to Tudbi Tools Micro Teaching Lectures on Oral Pathology. Today's topic is the supernumerary teeth or the extra mixtry teeth. So, what is a supernumerary tooth? A supernumerary tooth is an additional entity to the normal series which is seen in all quadrants of the jaw. So, as you can see here, you have an extra tooth which is located between the maxillary central incisors. It can be present in all the quadrants of the jaw. If it resembles closely to the group to which it belongs, it is known as a supplemental tooth. However, if it is an abnormal shape and size, it is called a rudimentary tooth. So in this picture, you can see the supplemental tooth lateral incisor closely resembles the adjacent teeth, whereas this rudimentary tooth does not bear any resemblance to the adjacent teeth. Now, what is the cause of the supernumerary tooth? It is all blamed on the dental lamina. So there is an excess and continued proliferation of the dental lamina. There are three theories related to it. Number one is the hyperactivity of the dental lamina. Number two is one tooth part splits into a normal tooth and a supplementary tooth giving rise to the supernumerary tooth. The third theory is the genetic theory. So again coming to this, the cause of supernumerary tooth is the development of excess dental lamina or continued proliferation of the dental lamina. The theories are the dichotomy theory where a tooth bud splits to form two different teeth, hyperactivity of the dental lamina and genetic predisposition. Now you must know if there is more than one supernumerary tooth present in the arch, it is usually associated with the syndrome. The first and foremost syndrome being the Gardner syndrome. Now the Gardner syndrome comprises of five things that you must know. One is the presence of impacted supernumerary and permanent tooth. The second is multiple epidermoid cyst of the skin. The third is desmoid tumors. Fourth is multiple polyposis of the large intestine. And fifth is the osteomas of the bone. Now why it is important for us is an early diagnosis can be done because of the presence of supernumerary teeth and the osteomas of the oral jaw bones. Coming to the next, we have the cleidocranial dysplasia, which is a triad of abnormal or absent clavicles, abnormal dentition, that is the present of, uh, presence of supernumerary teeth and delayed eruption of teeth, and the third being delayed closure of the fontanelles. The third condition that we have associated with it is the cleft palate. Now, cleft palate is, uh, there is a uh, presence of supernumerary teeth in up to 10 to 20 percent of the people with cleft palate. Coming to the prevalence, it occurs in 0.8 percent of the primary dentition, 2.1 percent of the permanent dentition. It is higher in males than females as per Schaeffer's. The most commonly affected site is the anterior maxilla which is followed by the mandibular premolar. It can occur singly in multiples unilaterally or bilaterally. So when it occurs in multiples, it is usually associated with the syndrome. Coming to the classification, it can be classified based on the morphology and the location. Based on the morphology, it is classified as conical, odontome, tubiculate and supplemental. How to remember this? Using the mnemonic COTS. Based on the location, it can be classified as MPDR, which is mesiodens, paramolar, distomolar and parapremolar. Coming to the classification based on morphology. So conical is the most common where you see a small or peck shaped tooth which is tapering towards the incisor edge. Then you have the tuberculate which is barrel shaped, rudimentary present in pairs. Number three, you have the supplemental tooth which is, uh, it resembles the adjacent tooth in the arch, most commonly, commonly the maxillary lateral incisor in the mandibular premolar. The fourth is the odontome, which is a hamartoma. It is a disorganized mass of dental tissue, which looks like a bag of teeth in x-rays. So again, based on morphology, you have conical, uh, odontome, tuberculate and supplemental. Coming to based on location, it can be the mesiodense, which is located between the true central incisors. Then you have the paramolar, which is present buckly or lingually or palatal to the molars. Now it is usually present between the second and third molar, sometimes between the first and second molar as well. This is the one. 
the next you have is the distomolar which is present behind the third molar and then you have the paraplemolar which is located again buccal or lingual to the premolars another category is the paraplemolar root and paraplemolar tubercle which is an additional root and an additional cusp in relation to the molar coming to the clinical considerations and treatment uh, supernumerary teeth can cause many things which are the delayed in eruption of the adjacent teeth crowding malocclusion diastema increase in caries and periodontal problems and also a dentature cyst if it remains unerupted the most common treatment is extraction uh, early diagnosis and treatment is advocated so that there is minimal aesthetic and functional problems so with this we come to the end of the video i hope that you learned something out of this for more such videos you can head on to the channel and check out the playlist on oral pathology and developmental disturbances of the teeth. So have a good day.